Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now we're going to start out with the uh, Bitcoin chart, the daily chart, and this one is pretty ominous. I've drawn in two trend lines here. I've drawn, unfortunately it, it extends back, but the first trend line I intended to draw was uh, this top one which basically starts here and shows this point this point this point this point and where we are right now the other one I started at the bottom and uh, caught all these bottoms because you can see it skipped those on the first trend line what's interesting is that those trend, line, trend lines meet right where we are and you can see we've had multiple tests of this trend but we also have this uh, declining formation here so it's kind of a is that uh falling pennant I don't think it's a uh, falling pennant but it's a pennant and uh, the price is going to test this line once again and the fact that these tops are lower consistently indicates to me that there's a pretty good chance that this thing is going to penetrate this line uh, where's it going to go could it go to here down here 1400 I think let's get the line even 1340 don't know it's definitely a possibility uh, as you know I have been getting my most of my money off of Polony X because of a lot of instability and questionable behavior I've seen on that exchange I haven't been transferring it to Bitrex although that's ultimately what I intend to do with what I keep in cryptocurrencies that aren't stored in wallets in other words not ones that are just permanent savings I have some of those but as far as my trading account I've basically been liquidating it for cash all through this topping area uh, I've pretty much tried to stay above 2500 when I sell so uh, the chart I watch here is the coinbase chart which tends to be higher than Bitfinex but uh, I've seen it be lower and that's just supply and demand that's how many people are trying to get Bitcoin off of coinbase versus how many are trying to sell to them and so I have been liquidating quite a bit now so I've been raising cash and that's what I want to talk about tonight is cash safety because there's a potential scenario where everything goes down let me show you something that's kind of similar to that here with bit with the altcoins okay so you can see here that uh, if we ch pick all the altcoins well let's start off with the Bitcoin price here on Poloniex now again this is Bitcoin in USDT it's very very close to what we see on uh, uh, Bitfinex but it's not exactly the same but you can see all all of today Bitcoin has been rounding down and t and kind of making new lows gradually testing uh, testing the bottom rallying a little bit and then going lower that's kind of been the pattern all day today uh, but when we look over at the altcoins we can see that now remember the altcoins are quoted in Bitcoin we can see that all but two of these coins are down on the day Bitcoin which by the way I believe Bitcoin is it's disabled <laughs> and there's Bitcoin dark so we really only have one true winner and that's Bitcoin dark you can see it's had a massive correction everything else is down you can see Veracoin down 31 percent against Bitcoin Scenario amp down 23 percent so huge losses in these altcoins uh, and I have some I have some a little bit of burst I have a little bit of uh, um, grid coin and I'm down on those I don't have a lot but uh, so why am I bringing this up well the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is an example where everything goes down now is it possible for everything to go down at the same time yes it is that's what happened in 19 in the 1930s everything went down the only thing that went up was cash and eventually gold but gold and silver they go down at the beginning so let's look at the crypto uh, price index and you can see here we're down at 91 billion if you remember that video I did uh, Elijah managed to make it very uh, he likes the inflammatory headlines I did not say that 
crypto market caps will be a trillion by the end of this year. I said they could be. There's no reason they couldn't be. And I talked about the fundamentals about it. But I've also talked about how Bitcoin and the rest of them can crash. Uh, the high we hit, I think, was 130 billion market cap. We're down to 91 billion. Remember, we took off from about that 30 billion. So we're still up threefold from there. But we're down significantly. $40 billion taken off the value of cryptocurrencies. That's a significant amount. You can see the uh, charts going down here, pretty much all of them. Bitcoin's still around $40 billion. Ethereum's $23 billion, And Ripple's $8 billion. The rest of them are tiny compared to those three. So this is a scenario where everything goes down. If you remember the the bond charts I talked about just recently in an update and I was looking at the long term and it appeared to me like interest rates were about ready to turn around and or the bond prices were ready to rally into new highs. Look at this reversal that we have here. This is just recent and I'm going to talk about the story of what's going on in Illinois. But you can see on June 27th, we've got here, this is a 30-year bond. We've got a drop from 157 to 153. Look over here on the 10-year note. Drop from 126 down here, 125. Pretty big drop. Uh, it's getting on the daily. So you can see a long rally and then a rolling over. Five-year note, same thing, rolling over. Two-year note, about, uh, rolled over more. The two-year note, you can see on the short end of the yield curve, there's actually a downtrend intact as opposed to say the 10 year which there was an uptrend and then it's rolling over that you got to get back to here to see the downtrend so the bonds are rolling over interest rates are going up let's look at the stocks can we have a situation where bonds and stocks fall at the same time absolutely that can happen uh, this is the Nasdaq you can see at the tail end here of the action on the NASDAQ, we've got a range expansion. Uh, I don't go by the VIX because the VIX is not, supposedly the VIX is a volatility indicator. Well, if the VIX were a volatility indicator, the VIX should have exploded starting June 26th and uh, been increasing significantly. But you'll see if we go over to the VIX, we don't really have that. We have some increase here, but you can see back to the mean. But that's not what uh, is happening. Volatility is increasing. And uh, range expansion. Range expansion just means that the size of the candlesticks are getting larger. That tends to indicate a, dire a new directional move. Uh, it doesn't always indicate that, but it tends to. So you can see here that uh, if we look at these candlesticks on the NASDAQ, uh, you had this one red candlestick here, a correction, and then a rally, and nice little tiny green candlesticks. Another big red candlestick here, a failed uh, rally. And then you can see range expansion, big candlesticks. This is the daily. So multiple days of big candlesticks. That is an indication of potential trend change. So potential trend change on stocks, potential trend change on bonds, potential trend change on Bitcoin. Uh, what about silver and gold? Uh, the metals don't look great, I will say that. Gold seems to be rolling over. Silver isn't rolling over, but it's extremely weak. Platinum appears to be heading down. Copper is going up. Palladium looks fairly strong. So looking at the gold chart, uh, we could see a rolling over scenario. So this is what I talked about when we get a potential deflationary move. And that's a time when you have to raise cash and you're talking about the safety of cash. Now, obviously, as silver stackers, we don't believe in the long-term safety of cash. But in the short term, if you're talking about potential volatility in the markets, then you do want to raise some cash. Now, I wanted to show you a story here about what's going on in Illinois. This is uh, really incredible. Before I read the court ruling here. I want to read the latest one that Tyler Durden wrote. It's just 
a short one here, but it really lays out what's going on. America's pension bomb. Illinois is just the start. We've written quite a bit over the past couple of months about the pending financial crisis in Illinois, which will inevitably result in the state's debt being downgraded to junk at some point in the near future. Here was, here is our latest from just this morning. From horrific to catastrophic, court ruling sends Illinois into financial abyss. I'm going to read that one next. Unfortunately, the state of Illinois doesn't have a monopoly on ignorant politicians. They're everywhere. And since the end of World War II, those ignorant politicians have been promising American baby boomers more and more entitlements while never collecting nearly enough money to cover them all. It's all been a massive state-sponsored scam. As we've noted frequently before, some of the largest of the many entitlement scams in this country are America's public pension funds. Up until now, these public pension funds have pub, public pensions have covered been covered by stealing money set aside for future generations to cover current claims. It's a Ponzi scheme of epic proportions, a 5 to 8 trillion dollars to be exact. Of course, the problem with Ponzi schemes is that eventually you'll get to the point where the Ponzi is so large that you can't possibly steal enough money from new entrants to cover redemptions from those trying to exit. And with the tidal wave of baby boomers about to pass into their retirement years, we suspect that America's Ponzi, epic Ponzi, is on the verge of being exposed for the world to see. And when the Ponzi dominoes start to fall, Bloomberg has provided this helpful map to illustrate who will succumb first. And then this is uh, public pension funding ratio and you can see Illinois the wor uh, third worst uh, New Jersey's actually the worst with Kentucky behind it and Illinois the only one that's actually in the positive you can see South Dakota 104 percent funding um, of course if you live in a state like South Dakota you may take some solace from the fact that your public pension is fully funded don't once the dominoes start to fall, and they will, those ignorant politicians we've mentioned above will think they're doing the right thing when they attempt to socialize the issue with federal bailouts and tax hikes. Unfortunately, this is one crisis that will be too large for even the American taxpayer to bail out. Now, we know the American taxpayer doesn't, hasn't done any of the bailouts, really. It's been the Federal Reserve printing money, and we just haven't seen the results of it because the Fed's been hiding it. Uh, how long can they get away with that? But I wanted to comment on this uh, in regards to the futures that we were looking at. So we're actually seeing the bonds here starting to roll over and interest rates starting to rise. And it's actually those higher interest rates that those public pension funds needed to to fund themselves. Because one one of the biggest reasons that they're all going bust is because they push their investments into riskier and riskier assets and uh, but now it's a double whammy because the bonds themselves are losing value so you have a principal value of a bond and as interest rates rise you lose money on the bond that you own the bond goes down in value as interest rates rise so yes we need interest rates to rise so that pension funds can can get some kind of return but to get there, that means that everybody who holds bonds has to take losses, and everybody who holds stocks has to take losses. And I guarantee you that these pension funds are holding enormous amounts of stocks and government bonds. Those are the two big bull markets. So this is a much, much bigger disaster than what is even described by Tyler Durden. Now let's look at the facts. Uh, of what's going on in Illinois. Before we do that, I want you to look at this statement here and keep this in mind when I'm reading this. And now the market is set to react. Investors have already punished Illinois for its fiscal woes. Yields on the state's 10-year bonds have soared to 4.8%. What is wrong with that? Now, it, if bonds have soared to 4.8 percent 4.8 percent has traditionally been considered a low interest rate keep this in mind this is what the market is saying that illinois bonds are worth 4.8 percent now let's look at the risk first maine then connecticut and finally late on friday confirming the worst case outcome many expected 
Illinois entered its third straight fiscal year without a budget. 4.8% without a budget? As Republican Governor Bruce Rauner and Democratic lawmakers failed to agree on how to compromise over the government's chronic deficits, pushing it closer towards becoming the first junk-rated U.S. state. Well, let me tell you, 4.8% is a long way from junk. By the end of Friday, the last day of the fiscal year, Illinois legislators failed to enact a budget, and while negotiations continued to mount some glimmers of hope and lawmakers planned to meet over the weekend, the failure marked a continuation of the historic impasse that's left Illinois without a full year budget since mid-2015, and which, recall, S&P warned one month ago will likely result in a humiliating and unprecedented downgrade of the fifth most populous U.S. state to junk status. Then, come the, then came the begging. According to Bloomberg on Friday, Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan, a Democrat who controls much of the legislative agenda, pleaded with the rating companies to temporarily withhold judgment as lawmakers negotiate. Quote, much work remains to be done, the Democrat said on the floor of the House Friday before the chamber adjourned for the day. We'll get the job done. Meanwhile, the state remains without a spending plan. Its tax receipts and outlays mostly on autopilot, leaving it with a record $15 billion of unpaid bills. Okay, can you imagine if you had a person or a company? I mean, if you go out and have excellent credit right now, you go out and try to get a credit card. A lot of times you might get a low rate for a while, but then they'll charge you 20%. This is a state that has $15 billion in unpaid bills. And it still has a 4.8% interest rate on its 10-year note. What is going on? As it spends, as it spent over six billion dollars more than it brought in over last over the past year, and with 800 million dollars in interest on unpaid bills alone, the impasse has devastated, devastated social service providers, shuttering services for the homeless, disabled, and the poor. The lack of state aid has wrecked havoc on universities, putting their accreditation at risk. If you notice here. You don't see any mention about the pensions that state workers are collecting, which are over, many of them who worked ordinary jobs are collecting over $100,000 a year with rigged uh, government pensions, but we don't see those being touched, and that's the big problem. However, in a shocking development, just hours remaining before the midnight deadline to pass, the Illinois budget and Illinois imminent loss of its investment grade rating, federal judge Joan Lefko in Chicago ordered Illinois to come up with hundreds of millions of dollars it owes in Medicaid payments that state officials say the government doesn't have. The Chicago Tribune reported Judge Lefko ordered the state to make $586 million in monthly payments from the current $160 million as well as another $2 billion towards a $3 billion backlog of payments $167 million increase in monthly outlays the state owes to managed care organizations that process payments to providers. While it's no secret that as part of its collapse into the financial abyss, Illinois has accumulated $15 billion in unpaid bills, the state's Medicaid recipients had had enough and went to court asking a judge to order the state to speed up its payments. On Friday, the court ruled in their favor. The problem, of course, is that Illinois can no longer af more afford to pay the outstanding Medicaid bills than it can to pay any of its $14 billion in overdue bills as of June 30th. The backlog of unpaid claims the state owes to manage care companies directly as well to the doctors, hospitals, clinics, and other organizations is, quote, crippling these providers and thereby dramatically reducing the Medicaid recipient's access to health care, Lefko said in her ruling. Friday's court ruling, which meant that near insolvent state must pay an additional $593 million per month, may have been the straw that finally broke the Illinois camel's back. And it goes on. And you can see here, again, shocking, a 4.8% uh, interest rate. That should be at least 25% or 30% or 50% interest rate on those bonds. Why isn't it? Because everybody is counting on the federal government to bail them out. That's why. But maybe Trump won't. And what will happen? Now, we also have Trump talking about a potential trade war with China. We know that trade wars are related to deflationary collapses. So again, back to the theme. I'm starting to see the signs of a potential deflationary collapse on the horizon. I didn't begin raising cash 
uh, for my cryptos because I saw that I just started raising cash because I thought that the prices were very high and it was time to take some profits now it's starting to look like we're going down in a lot of markets uh, it's gonna be a great time if we get this sort of scenario to raise uh, to use the cash that you raised if you've raised cash to buy more precious metals uh, the cash isn't safe for a number of reasons uh, even if you go to your bank and take out a small amount say three or five hundred dollars a day for a whole bunch of days not to raise any red flags and you stash your cash in a safe somewhere hidden in the forest or whatever you do um, there's still tremendous risk because if your cash is in the bank and you have less than 100000 you have the FDIC guaranteeing you, doesn't mean the bank can't shut its doors and you get bailed in. If you have your cash uh, buried in a safe out in the middle of nowhere where nobody knows, well, what happens if the government issues a new currency and they set a deadline and you have to turn that cash in? Uh, then you're stuck. So ultimately, it comes back to the safety of precious metals. We know in the long run, that the only thing that's truly safe is going to be physical precious metals. Now, I don't know which cryptocurrency is going to succeed. I believe there will be a winner that will come out of this. Uh, it may the winner may not even exist right now. Uh, so if you think back with let's say automobiles, um, uh, there were some that survived, but how many were there? Uh, I, I believe in the 1920s, uh, I don't quote me on this, but I read an article, something like 50 to 100 different car companies. You remember Stutz Bearcat? Um, so Ford survived. Can you name any others? Uh, General Motors. They went bankrupt, remember? Government Motors. Uh, Chrysler, I guess. Uh, but really, if you think about it, um, it's quite possible that we haven't even seen the cryptocurrency yet that's going to be the one that survives and these all go bust then again Bitcoin might just correct and actually continue an upward trend along this line we're going to know pretty soon because it's very clear that the testing of this line uh, is coming in short order you can see we're either going to bounce like we have in the past or we're going to roll over and bust through that and either go down here to 1800 or possibly even down to 1200 uh, same thing on the futures uh, we just don't know how low this stuff can go if something like the pension crisis in Illinois starts to spread and as Tyler Durden pointed out even if you have fantastic uh, numbers like South Dakota it doesn't matter because those numbers are calculated based on the value of your bonds based on the value of your stocks and guess what when everything rolls over all that stuff goes down at the same time and all those wonderful funding numbers that you had uh, they go down too and so if you're sitting like South Dakota with a good number at 104 percent that can drop down to 50 percent if you're sitting where Illinois is or Kentucky or New Jersey down around 30 or 40 percent that can get cut in half or worse and we're talking about 20 percent 10 percent and a declaration of bankruptcy uh, that means you sell your assets that means a deflationary wave and uh, so uh, I'm raising cash I think at this point it's a prudent thing to do raise cash if it turns out that uh, we don't get a crisis but we get a bounce in everything and we rally then it's probably going to be a good time to pick up more silver or maybe even more crypto we'll talk to you next time